Is this all clear? So these rotations are in fact can be, can be shown as vectors. And if you have a vector in this direction, then this would be a positive rotation around this axis and it will look like this. And you can always do this with your right hand, yeah, thumb and four hands. So this is another vector Q and like this and this is another vector like that. So if I tell you the angular velocity of the airplane around its, around its x body axis, we should call it P. So if I tell you the rotation of this airplane, R, the R rotation of the airplane, will be the rotation of the airplane around its z body axis. You see that, right? It will be this rotation. So the r rotation, the r rotation of that airplane will be the rotation around the body, body z axis. So if the airplane would rotate like this, z body would rotate with it. So this would be r. This would be p. And this would be Q. If the airplane is in this situation, this is X body, and this is Z body, this would be R, this would be P, and this would be Q. Understood? And these are all vectors. If you add them together, you get one big vector that denotes the rotation of that aircraft. If you add these three vectors together, and that's the rotational vector. So if you add them all together, the airplane will do this. Look up here. It might be doing all sorts of maneuvers. At each instant, it will have one rotational vector. It might be something like that. Oops. Fall off. It's getting old. So you might be rotating like that. So you can rotate, you can decompose this rotational vector into P, Q, and R. And that's what we're doing here. This rotation might be around one axis. It might, the rotation itself might be actually around this axis, let's say. Something like that. But this is not an axis that we define. We decompose this vector into P, Q, and R. Okay? And that's your rotational vector. So whenever I say P, Q, and R, it's a rotational vector of the airplane with respect to the inertial frame in the, in the body fixed coordinate system. Any questions? Okay, more definitions now. So we have defined U, V, and W. We have defined P, Q, and R. And I have two more definitions. So when I say in the exam, Q is equal to one radians per second, you should immediately know what I mean. Q is equal to one radians per second means that it is the rotation of the airplane along Y body as observed from the inertial frame. Okay? All right. One more definition. Again, X body, Z body, and Y body. Okay, body fixed coordinate system. What are the forces that act on this airplane? What are the forces that act on the airplane? Tell me a few names. Gravity, of course there's gravity. If there's no gravity, it will fall down, right? What else? Lift, so you have gravity, you have lift, of course, you have drag, thrust, good, very good, you have thrust. Anything else? What is inertia force? Well, how is it accelerating? There is no such thing, okay? These are the external forces. If it accelerates, it will be because the comp if you add them together, the total, the total force, if you add them together, 
and there I have the total force. If this total force is not zero, it will accelerate in one direction. Don't do that again, okay? Next time I will not allow to enter. Shear force is still coming from drag. You mean the shear force along the body? That's drag. That's what we call drag. I mean, it's part of drag. Drag is, has more components, but the shear force is included in the drag. Another force. Lift, drag, trust, gravity. That's it. That's it. That's pretty much it. I mean, there might be other things, you know, but that's pretty much it. And then you have moments. Good. So. If you add them together, if you add them together, I'm going to add this one and these three separately. The gravity, of course, is mg. Okay, so mg is in which direction? It will be in this direction, right? This force is mg. It is in this direction. And lift and drag, they have their own directions. I mean, this is quite simple. This is actually in the direction of which coordinate system can I use to define this the direction of mg? Tell me one coordinate system that I could use or one coordinate axis of that system that I can use mg. Hmm? No, no, the earth, yeah, maybe the earth because the z, z, e, yeah, that's a good one. A very good one is ZV, the Z coordinate system of the vehicle carrier coordinate system. You're right, the Earth could be also be used, so it would be the ZE would also be one, right? But ZW is ZV is of course one of them. So this is MG. So the rest is lift, drag, and thrust. So what we are going to do in this class is we are going to take these three and call them a force, and this is MG. I will take keep them separate, so. M, this F, this, the rest of it, would probably be something like that. So this, this will be F. And F includes lift, drag, and thrust. Okay? Lift, drag, and thrust. So this is F. And this is MG. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decompose F into its components. So it will be like that. And I will call this X, a big X. And it might have a component over here, let's call it big Y. And I have a component over here and I call this big Z. Okay? So F, written in the body axis system, will be written X, Y, and Z. And what is this? It is the force that does not include gravitational force. Force. And it is written in the body axis system. fixed coordinate system <coughs> system x is along x body y is along y body and z is along z body and therefore we call this the aeropropulsive forces aero Propulsive forces. Because it includes lift, drag, and thrust. Lift and drag is in the aero part, and thrust is, is in the propulsive far, part. So it is aerodynamics and propulsive forces is X, Y, and Z. If you add them together, it is one big force, and the big force might be in this direction. 
But if you decompose it in the body axis system, we call it X, Y, and Z. Okay? And lift and drag are in total different directions, in fact. But you could write it like this. But this force, X, Y, and Z, does not include the gravitational force, Mg. So it only includes lift, drag, and thrust. And therefore, we call it the aeropropulsive forces, X, Y, and Z. Does it make sense? So none of them is lift or drag. But this F is, the composed, is composed of lift and drag. So in fact, if you do this, let's, let's do it this way. In fact, if you take the airplane, and say this is V infinity, and say this is XW, and say this is ZW, and this is into the thing, and let's say this is IW. And I use the same force like that. And F includes lift, drag, and thrust. So, now I can plot lift and drag, that would be very nice because lift is probably in this direction, this is lift, perpendicular to xw, right? And this is drag, which is in the direction of xw, opposite in xw. xw is the wind fixed coordinate system, remember? And thrust, thrust is probably in this direction. This is probably thrust. Okay, you add these three together, you could write F in the wind axis system, and they will be X wind, Y wind, and Z wind, not exactly equal to lift, drag, and stuff like that, because you still have thrust. Okay, if V infinity goes here, this is X W and so on. So if you go back to that picture, to the picture here on top, let me just, excuse me one second. If you come back here, and XW is pointing this way, I could, here I could still say this is thrust, and then this is lift somewhere, and this is drag, right? Lift, drag, and thrust. Total of them is the force F, and you to decompose them into X, Y, and Z forces. Same thing over here. Lift, drag, and thrust, add them together, you get F, but F can be decomposed into X, Y, and Z, Y. I mean, it looks like this, of course, now. Big X, W, big Z, W. Okay, so these are all big capital letters. And these are the forces. Any questions? Do you understand this? So it's nothing special really. We are writing the forces that act on the airplane in the body axis system. We call them X, Y, and Z. And lift, drag, and thrust are included in X, Y, and Z. And gravity is out. So X, Y, and Z are the aeropropulsive forces. Again, let me, are the aeropropulsive forces. Aeropropulsive. forces that act along XB, YB, and ZB, basically the three forces along um, along the body axis. Now, do I need to specify a reference frame in order to define a force? The answer is no, because a force is a force. It does not depend on a reference frame. So I do not have to say the force is with respect to the inertial frame or the body axis. If there's an action of force, it is observed from everywhere or felt from every direction the same. The, you need the reference frame only to define motion, velocities, accelerations, rotations, and things like that. But forces and moments, they're not like this. Understood? Any questions? 
Yes. Try it in English, please. We said that XB, YB, and ZB, it should be X win YB for the other two halves. No, 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 no. I'm just saying there is lift, drag, and thrust acting on this airplane. And you, if you add them together, you get a big force F. And you can write this, decompose this force F in any coordinate system you want. Here I decompose it, it is X, Y, and Z. I call them X, Y, and Z. And this is the decomposition of this force in this coordinate system. The same forces act on that airplane as well. Lift, drag, and thrust. You add them together, you get the same force F. And you can decompose this F in any coordinate system. In this case, I decompose this F into XW, YW, and ZW. Okay? So whenever I say X, Y, Z, and don't say anything else, then I definitely mean the one in the body fixed coordinate system. Okay? That's what I meant. X, Y, and Z are the aeropropulsive forces that act along X, B, Y, V, and Z. Good? Yes? N well, it, it depends. <coughs> well, you know, I defined X body towards the nose of the airplane. Now, if the thrust is also towards the nose of the airplane and you put your X body there, yes, X body is in the direction of the nose of the airplane and so is the thrust. Now, two questions. The thrust doesn't always have to point exactly towards the nose, nose, then it is not, then it is not pointing towards the nose, then it is not around, around, around X body. Second thing is, the airplane might not have a nose. I mean, what is the nose of the airplane, right? So if you move the X body a little bit towards the thrust vector, you don't really miss anything, you just have to know that X body is pointing to, towards a certain direction. Okay. So it's really up to us how we define X body. I mean, how, how you put X body in which direction. We generally put it towards the front of the airplane. But once you put it there, it must stay there and move and rotate with the airplane. If it doesn't move and rotate with the airplane, then it's not a body fixed coordinate system. As the name suggests, it is fixed to the body. And you need to make the definition how you choose the coordinate system to fix. In flight mechanics, we usually put it towards the nose because you can always uh, have a tip on the, uh, on the nose. But you could clearly slightly modify X body and then point it along the thrust vector and say, this is my X body. That is fine, except you, we have to all agree that that is X body. Okay? So generally, in most airplanes, the thrust vector is towards the nose of the airplane because typically you, you optimize these things. So it is a good starting point, let's say. If I wanted to make a quick assumption, you know, a quick analysis, you know, you have seen these pictures in flight mechanics books or in, in, in simpler books actually that look like this. You have an airplane, uh, this is uh, the weight, mg, this is lift, this is drag, and this is thrust. Thrust cancels drag, lift cancels mg. And you are in air. Is this picture accurate enough? Of course not. Right? A little angle on the airplane, it will not be accurate anymore. If the airplane looks like this, and this is the infinity, suddenly drag is like that, lift is like that, and maybe mg is like this, However, thrust is like that. So thrust doesn't exactly cancel drag. So you can, but this is not a bad approximation if you first make a little calculation. But if you get in more complicated situations where the airplane is up and it's going down a little bit and a little bit to the side, then you have to be very precise with these angles and the coordinate systems and reference frames. You can't make that, that child book, it looks like a child book, like assumption. So, the question, is the thrust always along X body? Well, you tell me. Okay. Another question. 
No questions? OK. Final definition, and then we are done with these definitions. If we have a force, we also have, what do we have? If we have a force, we of course have moments, right? You can take this airplane and rotate it along its nose. You can take this airplane and rotate it around this, right? The force is a force, look up here. The force is a force. You push, pull, whatever, that's a force. But then there's something called a moment. Someone can hold this and rotate this. That's a moment. Who would rotate this airplane? It will be the ailerons that you have on this airplane that would change, that would have more force here, less force on this side, and rotate this airplane. So that's a moment. So there are not only forces acting on this airplane, like lift, drag, and thrust, there's also a lot of moments acting on this airplane so that the airplane does these kinds of motions. And the moment is very similar to a force. It doesn't need a reference frame. From anywhere, you look at the airplane, you can feel the moment. The rotational speed can be observed differently maybe, but this has to be the moment does not need a reference frame. So, if I want to rotate this aircraft along this direction, okay, sorry. If you want to rotate this airplane around the X body, this is again a positive rotation, again right hand rule, take your thumb, rotate, this is a positive rotation. This moment, this is a positive moment, and we call this moment L. This is a positive moment, we call it M, and this is a positive moment here, and we call it N. And they are all along the body fixed coordinate system. Of course, these are not, these are rotations, these are not vectors. L, M, and N are these vectors, these vector components. L, M, and N. So, this is the moments, the external moments that act on the aircraft. Sorry. In G written in the body fixed coordinate system we call L, M and N. If you add them together, L, M and N, you might obtain something like this and that is the total moment, the external moment that acts on the aircraft. Okay, L, M and N. And L, M, and N, they are written in the body fixed coordinate system. Can we write it somewhere else? Of course we can. G, the moment, external moment, is a vector, like any other vector, like a velocity vector, force vector, anything. So because it's a vector, it can be written in any coordinate system. I could write it in any coordinate system, but if I write in the body fixed coordinate system, I call them L, M, and N. And L, M, and N are the three components of the external moments that act on the airplane. Is that correct? Is that okay? Any questions? Okay. So, finally, as a result, we have learned U, V, W, P, Q, R, X, Y, Z, L, M, and N. These are all variables written in the body fixed coordinate systems. These ones, they depend on the reference frame. These ones, 
they don't depend on the reference frame. They are all written in the body fix coordinate system. Fixed coordinate system. All defined in the body fix coordinate system. This is the velocity of the aircraft, velocities. of the aircraft and these are the angular velocities of the aircraft. The reference frame we are using here is the inertial reference frame. So they are all defined in the inertial reference frame. Velocities, angular velocities. Aeropropulsive, aeropropulsive, propulsive forces. And these are the related moments. Since the gravitational force at the CG, I mean, right? This is all at the CG. The body fixed axis is at the CG. So the, the, the gravitational force will not have a moment at the CG. So therefore, these moments are, by definition, aeropropulsive moments. So I don't have to say that because the gravitation does not induce a moment if it's because it is at the CG by definition, right? Moment. Aeropropulsive forces, angular velocities, velocities, these are in the reference frame of the inertial frame. They don't depend on the reference frame. Everything is defined in the body fixed coordinate system. And you need to know this <coughs> symbology. Need to know, know <coughs> this symbology. Know what they mean. If I tell you M is equal to this, you should immediately know what I mean. If I tell you P is equivalent to 0 0.1 radians per second, you, you should immediately know, need to know which direction and all this. I don't want you to memorize a lot in this class, but this is something you really need to memorize. It's like memorizing your name. Okay? I don't want you to memorize formulas, you know, a lot of you know, some of the things you just need to know. And these are the things we need to know. Only then we can talk. If I tell you the airplane has <coughs> a rotation in Q, so you should immediately know it's a rotation in Q. It's like that, in the Y body axis. Okay? So P, Q, and R, P, Q, and R, in the body axis. This one, this rotation is what we call the roll. This one is the pitch, and this one is the yoke. Okay? So rotation in roll, a rotation in pitch, a rotation in yaw. Similarly over here, you might want to write this down. This is a roll moment. This is a pitch moment. And this is a yaw moment. Is that okay? Any questions? Any questions on the definitions? What they mean, where they come from? No? Okay. So, let's make one more step and let's say this. I told you, if I write the velocity vector, the velocity is always a good example. Uh, you know, these vectors, I can talk about any vector, but the velocity vector is such a good vector to, to, to visualize. So let's say the airplane has a velocity vector of, and it, let's write it in the body fixed coordinate system, and let's say the velocity of the vector 
written in, with respect to the inertial frame or the earth axis system or, or earth, earth fixed coordinate system written in the body axis system, let's say is 300 kilometers per hour, 10 kilometers per hour, 30 kilometers per hour. Okay, this is a bad writing, I'm sorry. I should start over. Let's say I have an airplane written in the body axis system. This is the velocity. And it has 200, 0, 10 kilometers per hour of velocity. Which means this is an airplane. I don't know its position, but this is X body. This is Z body. And this is Y body. Which means the airplane is going 200 kilometers per hour in this direction zero in the y and so therefore 10 kilometers per hour in this direction. Right? So the actual velocity of that airplane is this, this, plus this, so it is actually this. This is the velocity vector of this airplane with respect to the inertial frame, let's say, in this case. Okay, so this is the actual velocity of the airplane with respect to someone looking from Earth and let's say Earth is flat, non-rotating, and therefore this can be viewed as the inertial frame. Okay, so this is your velocity of the aircraft. Can I write this velocity vector in any other coordinate system? Of course I could. I could write this in the, um, I don't know. Let's write it in the wind axis system. Okay. Now I need to know which way is V infinity is coming from. Let's say V infinity is coming from this direction. Just to make things easier. Right? Let's say V infinity is in this direction, just to make things easier. So the velocity vector, the same velocity vector, written in this coordinate system. Now the coordinate system now, of course, XW is pointing in this way, right? XW is this way, because V infinity is in that way. So it is basically another number. It is basically this, this whole thing. It is 200 square plus 10 square square root, right? And then zero, zero kilometers per hour. This is written in the Vint axis coordinate system. Is that good? Let's put it like that. It's a number. So if you look at these numbers, they look like they are different velocities, but it's the same velocity vector. It's this and this, right? Two, two different velocity vectors. I'm sorry, it's the same velocity vector, but written in two different coordinate systems. And the numbers are different. They're, so someone just looking at this without explaining all these things, you might say, oh, these are two different velocity vectors. He has, he has a 10 over here, he has a 0 over here, this is 200, this is something else. But no, it is the same velocity vector. Okay, same velocity vector, just written in different coordinate systems. Now, there must be a relation between these numbers, and you see there is a relation. I have 210, and it's and now it is 200 square plus 10 square square root, and all this. So there must be a relation between them. So how do we how to relate VB to VW? Okay. How do we do that? There is a relation. It's the same vector. They're not different. I'm just trying to find the new components. How do we find, do we find new components? The new components. Understand? That's my problem now. And for that, we will have a new section, a new uh, little chapter we call vector transformations. And don't allow your, uh, this vector transformation, uh, this term, to fool you. We are not transforming the vector. The vector is the same vector. We are just rewriting a vector 
in a different coordinate system. This is what we are doing. We are rewriting a vector in a different coordinate system. And we call this vector transformation. So basically what I'm going to do is, we are going to find rules to write this vector in another coordinate system. From body to wind, from body to vehicle carried, from vehicle carried to body, from vehicle carried to wind. How can I rewrite the same vector in different coordinate systems in 3D? You might have seen this before in, in math classes or somewhere, but I'm going to do it in a certain way, in a, in, a certain, in a certain systematic way that we are using in flight dynamics. Okay? So I would like to stop here because this particular subject requires a separate independent class. If you don't have any questions, I see you next week. <coughs> oh, one more thing before you go. All these classes are now on the website. They are filmed and they are put on the website. You can watch these classes again on the internet. The links for these classes are given in our course website. Go to our course website, the links are there. Thank you.